All right. We're gonna talk about Terminal Bliss, my first movie, and I wanna just isolate the conversation to all things about how the movie got made. Um, the screenplay. I started writing the screenplay when I was roughly about 17 years old. I was still in high school, senior year. Uh, a lot of things that I was inspired by were unfortunately really darker issues among the community of Montclair, Upper Montclair, New Jersey, which is a suburb roughly about 12 miles away from Manhattan. It's extremely popular. There are people like Stephen Colbert that still live there to this day. As a matter of fact, he is taking over the Montclair Film Festival. And what's interesting about that is that he doesn't know me and neither they, but yet my film was the actual premiere of the first annual Montclair Film Festival. That's right, Terminal Bliss was the very, very first movie and there's a lot of that in my life a lot of little did you know that jordan's this jordan's that was the first you know i had the first 4k online distribution uh, with cats dancing on jupiter there was no servers that were able to take a full-length feature film and upload on the internet so i did it through a private server through a fiber optic network that i just bought so with terminal bliss it was my first feature that was a fe like official it was a 35 millimeter movie which is a big deal big budget for me but there was a lot of other things that came from that project that were really interesting. Um, the project began in what, 84 was my la that next to last year of high school. And by 85, I had at least a working screenplay and I was pretty much doing rewrites all the time. I used to use a typewriter, no computers back then. And um, sorry, I feel like I have to adjust my camera angle. It's not a headroom here. There we go, that's better. So, uh, wow, my haircut's a little off. Um, so with the project, um, I, I wanted to do my own like Ingmar Bergman movie. It was like very influenced by Ingmar Bergman. For anybody that doesn't know who know Ingmar Bergman is, He's a sweet, he was a Swedish filmmaker and he used to do films like Fanny and Alexander, Cries and Whispers. Uh, you know, the the themes were extremely dark, like, you know, um, infamously, probably his most famous character in The Seventh Seal was Death, okay? Yeah, there was like a man with a sickle. And then probably what most mainstream people would know the reference is actually in Monty Python's Meaning of Life. They actually make a reference to Bergman. So I'm like this 18 year old playing hooky from Pratt Institute, which is where I was supposed to be going to college. And I'm spending, I'm not even exaggerating, six hours watching back to back Bergman films at the Bleecker Street Cinema, or um, you know, watching films at the studio cinemas, or the, um, what was it? The famous, and Alice Tully Hall, but Lincoln Center, so these were, unbelievable movie theaters because the newest wave of American independents were coming through. European uh, filmmakers like Bergman and Kurosawa were, were available. And I'm living in New York, at least enough time. I'm staying in this apartment I'm on 4th Street in uh, the West Village. And I'm kind of going back and forth New Jersey depending on where I was with prepping my movie. That's a whole nother story. So with Terminal Bliss, I, I needed to get things going. And I had this video, this new kind of like cutting edge video stuff it was an eight millimeter video. And it was the, you know, the best quality video that was as close to emulating 16 millimeter film. So I started casting and I put an ad in backstage and who responds to my ad? Sandra Bullock. Uh, I'm in this NYU you know, room. I'm not going to NYU. I'm kind of sneaking in their classrooms and she walks in and I said, who called her in? Because I, I didn't do it. It was a, a production manager. He said, oh, I thought she'd be cute. So I give him credit. And she was delightful in the read. She was Sandra Bullock. Um, and I went up to her and I was house sitting for uh, the Krolls in Montclair. And I said, hey, uh, um, I've got this house in New Jersey. I, I want to start shooting tomorrow. Come with me on the decamp bus ride back to New York. And she did. She went back to her apartment. It's kind of crazy when I think about it. Packed up and kind of moved into this house with me for like a week. And we just started shooting. Um, and then when I needed certain actors, she'd be like, oh, I know this guy, Keith Bogart, and he's, I just did a movie called Hangman with him. So then Keith and I became uh, friends and, and Keith would do the role of John Hunter. And so she was playing the lead of Stevie Bradley and he'd do John Hunter. But the problem was we hadn't gotten the, um, the money to do the feature film yet. 
And everybody knows that the money determines you know, the cast. So there's a lot of nervousness because you've got these actors helping you. You're not even sure if it's a director. You know, you might end up, at the time I didn't know this, but they could have just bought the screenplay and gotten another director. So I had met, um, we, we go to the IFP film market, this independent feature project market. And I was trying to act like I was mature, like not, you know, we were smokers, I would smoke a cigarette. Like even though I only smoked three cigarettes a day, I was like, whatever you do, don't smoke in front of people, they'll know you're immature. And I try to wear like a suit and tie and then Sandy would be all cute and charming and, and be next to me. And then we would get people going, oh, you're so cute, you're 18, you're, you know, you're a young filmmaker. Hey, you know, let's, let's watch your movie. And I had a screening, it was like so pathetic. They gave me, I remember they didn't schedule me right and they gave me some like AV room where it was like enough room for eight people. But all it took was one person, Brian Cox was a producer who happened to be in that room and he handed me his card and he said he was interested, which is when you're that age, you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to call you. Um, so I, I followed up with him like religiously and he was, you know, he killed me with encouragement or he didn't kill me, but he could have. Um, so I started, you know, taking all these videos I had of Sandy and uh, we cut them together, like, you know, love scenes and some of them I'm, I'm uploading on YouTube. So you're seeing them kind of around this video. You're maybe seeing some on TikTok. And uh, they're like, you know, little eight minute pieces, five minute pieces. Sometimes they're just like kind of run on monologue kind of things. But I'm doing whatever I can to show that I've, I've got talent, I've got a vision. And I, I wanna show this drama about these kids doing, you know, drugs and too much sex and partying and how their souls are decaying. And uh, Anat Singh, who is the financier behind Brian Cox, who is Distant Horizons, owner of Distant Horizon Films, which is out of South Africa, eventually, you know, flew to New York. He kind of came to New York like four or five times a year. And he, Brian said, hey, I'm a knots in town. I, I want to show him your, your videos. And it was at Columbia University. So what's interesting is I had my best friend going to Columbia, Alex Roth. So my best friend's attending um, freshman classes. Now, today, it's funny when you learn these things, he hated it. I didn't realize that. Um, I, I kind of knew that there were a lot of problems and there was a lot of, it's like affirmative action was not exactly a turn on um, educationally, but he put up with a lot. Um, I think that, you know, with the, the timing for him, it may have been bad, but I, you know, called him over. I said, hey, let's hang out. And he says, what's going on? I said, well, I've got this guy who says he's gonna watch my movie, but that was like an hour ago. I literally, I think I spent an hour, hour and a half with him you know, hurry up and wait for this guy. And he shows up. So I said, hey, you know, wish me luck. And uh, he does. And I, I go into this room, kind of another AV room with a three quarter inch tape clink. And I watch 15 minutes of my stuff. And Anat says, um, you know, he's a smaller diminutive guy. And he says, Mr. Allen. He's like South African Indian. He goes, Mr. Allen, I think you're talented, but this is shot on video and uh, I shoot, you know, this is a 35 millimeter business and it's very expensive. You seem quite young. I don't know if you're ready to handle that. So I'm like, fuck, what, you know, what am I gonna do? So I, I go back to the drawing board and I'm, meanwhile, I'm, I'm producing this NYU thesis film for an NYU student. So I kind of was hanging around Tisch School of the Arts just to be around uh, students that had it going on, whether that financing and talent stuff, I could you know produce and collaborate. So I ended up having my uncle come out to meet me and saying, you know, what are you doing with your life? You're not at, you're not going to Pratt regularly. You're on this street in you know the village, you know, producing this movie. But like, what what's your plan? And I said, oh, I want to be a film director. And he said, you know, well, that's you know great and stuff. But how are you going to support yourself? So um, I said, look. I need to shoot a trailer in 35. It's going to be very expensive. He says, how much? So I said, I think it's like $20,000 is what they're telling me. I need to shoot like six or seven minutes of the movie. And he says, okay, I'll tell you what. Um, I'm going to write a check for $20,000. And when you go through the money, and when you finish this project, whatever you do, and I wish you the best, you're going to agree to return to college and complete college. Um, I was very fortunate my family had money set aside for college. And I said, uh, all right, all right, you know what? Okay, fine. Because he knew I was kind of like anti-college. I just didn't want to go. I, I just had enough of school. 
I was not a very good student. I was like a C minus, very mediocre student at best. Um, performing arts, I went to a performing arts school. I excelled. I was like an A plus plus because I was making movies. But movies, I just want to be free. So with that, he writes this check for 20 grand. And I get to make the trailer. And that's literally, uh, that's a, obviously a blessing to have that. And I will upload part two and let you know what happens with that trailer money.